On today's episode, the news just keeps flowing in, and for the first time ever, we are doing a mock draft, but not a regular one, a mayhem mock draft. It's me versus Jason, but Andy is making some uh, selections for other people. Make sure you stick around and find out what it's all about. Subscribe to this channel, like this video, leave us some comments if you enjoy the mayhem. Mayhem. The time is coming swiftly. The middle rounds are now close to the unskilled. Yet here you are, unprepared, you fools. This season you will find all kinds of foes, eager to watch your draft crumble with wasted picks. There can only be one ultimate draft kit. Only one that can bend them to its will. And it does not share power. You must wield the UDK and send your opponents back to the shadows. You shall not pass. On this chance to send your league mates into the deep, fly you fools to ultimatedraftkit.com. To the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's football time! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sort of. Well, yeah. I can't give my full endorsement but it's it's on it's gonna be on tonight will i be watching yes welcome to the fantasy footballers podcast what's going on everybody mayhem has arrived mm. a day late a dollar That's short right. but mayhem has arrived it's just more suspense for the uh, head-to-head mock draft today where i will be doing my darndest to disrupt your plans um, I want to say that I am fully prepared. I want to say that I am ready and I'm willing to duck and roll and uh, just, you know, go with the punches. And I know what's going to actually happen, Andy, and I'm going to be very, very mad at you today <laughs> at some point. <laughs> well, don't I, you ruin my team. I don't have a set plan of when I will use these disruptions. I'm, uh, you know, I'm not sitting here saying, okay, in the first and the third and the fifth round, I'm going to hit you guys. I'm going to let it come to me. Mayhem is best served improvisationally is what I've decided. So I'm going to let it come to me. But at various points in the mock draft, I'm going to say, no, you got to pick a different player. I'm going to make a pick for you. And I'm going to give your opponent some power in the middle of the mock draft. So very excited oh, about man. that. Um, it will be fun to whoever gets that first to see what is the baseline <laughs> that is set yeah. for choosing for your opponent. That's true. That's true. We'll try to be reasonable, but the point is mayhem, right? Like if you can't define the move as mayhem, try again is, is my view. So uh, reminder, the ultimate draft kit available right now. Get yourself primed and ready for your upcoming drafts. I was doing a little uh, league commissioner work this morning in our league of record, which is entering its 16th season. And I was getting, uh, making sure all the settings were perfect and uh, all the decisions or all the keepers were in there. And so it's go time. We've got drafts coming all month long, and uh, you want to be ready at ultimatedraftkid.com. I am uh, also doing some commission things today, working on a little league known as the Megala Bowl. Oh, are you talking about me? I am talking about you. I'm talking about new scoring settings, maybe some new roster settings. But uh, Don't tell all my secrets. I won't. You'll have to sign up to figure it out. And I know we have new people listening, so thank you for joining us. We're five days a week, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Uh, if you are new, the Megalobowl is our community league. It is massive, um, and it will get started here. You know, we'll start talking about it more in the next few weeks in ways that you can enter and join and enjoy a year with uh, a bunch of Fantasy Footballers listeners. It's going to be so much fun. I mean, the, the Twitter right now is exciting. Because, yeah. and, and I know, you know, it's like that you can 
simultaneously take some of this hype with a grain of salt and love every minute of it. And that's where I'm at. I'm at the place where I love the videos coming through. I love that if there's a player I'm interested in how they're performing at camp, it's a search away and I can watch uh, a handful of, you know, self-made videos from the stands of, of fans checking these out. So um, I'm in, man. I'm in for, on all this hype. I heard your Romeo uh, Dobbs uh, discussions yesterday yeah. and uh, including how to pronounce his name, which you look, some people already trying to correct us. But if mm. you go and listen, Romeo Dobbs, that's the name. That's yeah, what he fi- he finally said it at a uh, press conference after four years in Nevada not saying it. Yeah, it's it's. They said he's a shy guy and didn't want to correct anybody, but then he was finally asked the question. And so I, I like I like going with what the actual human being says his <laughs> name is. I think that's my favorite source of information. That's why it's been such a problem with Camara because when they when they said, "Hey, Alvin, how do you say your last name?" He's like, "Well, I go with you know Camara, but my mom goes Kamara." And you're yeah. like. Wait a what? This we're allowed to do this now. Not to throw a wrench in it, but Romeo Dobbs also said, "You can call me Dubs. That's fine." Oh come on! Yeah. So, well, you so, can call me Jocelyn. That's also okay. <laughs> <laughs> you guys want to talk some news? Let's do it. News and notes from around the league. Not that we want to talk about it anymore, but we have to talk about it. Yep. What's the latest on Deshaun Watson? So the NFL is appealing the six-game suspension for Deshaun Watson. We got that news, and then more and more started to trickle out, including a report from Jeff Darlington that the NFL is seeking a, quote, indefinite suspension that would be a minimum of one year. Now, the ironic thing here. Good. <clears throat> yeah, the, the, uh, the very unique situation of the new CBA is that the NFL is going to appeal uh, this to – Roger Goodell to themselves <laughs> that, that, to themselves that that is now he will pick a uh, designee because I'm sure he doesn't want the PR of just yes. having it be him but it's whoever he wants he it, it is appealed to him or someone he picks and so they are appealing to themselves now they can't appeal any information or present any new information it is just the discipline that's it they're just appealing these six games and saying that um, based on what the findings were it should be more and then they themselves will decide if it's more and they will decide that it is because they are appealing to themselves. So this indefinite suspension uh, with a minimum one year is my current expectation of what's going to happen for Deshaun Watson. Now, the only wrench in that yeah. is that he can then kind of appeal that through the federal courts, and it is possible he's continued. He's given more time. We saw this with Ezekiel Elliott back in the day where all of a sudden – you know, now the the court systems are saying, well, you've got to wait for that to play out. And then Deshaun Watson's on the field week one. I from from the the lawyers that I've read, I don't think that it will be granted, in which case I expect Deshaun Watson to miss this season. But TBD. Yeah, it's all over the place still. There will be more drama and more headlines without question on our path to uh, to that end or one like it. We also got news yesterday highlighting, look, just the speaking of PR campaigns, thank goodness the Browns are around. Otherwise, Hollywood Brown was oh, arrested Cardinals. for criminal speeding on Wednesday morning. Come on, Hollywood. Uh, yeah, to be fair. It's a misdemeanor. We've Any, all been there. We've, we've all been arrested for criminal speeding. <laughs> Have uh, we now? I did see. I saw a report because they, they were kind of all over the place. I saw one where it's like, well, he was just going 85, which... So our speed limits here on the freeways are 65 in Arizona, but there is we have the criminal speeding rule that says if you're at 85, you can be taken right to jail. Whoa, like, I've, like that's okay, we've all been there. <laughs> but then I saw a report that it was like yeah, around 126 or so on the freeway, which if you're going that fast, then I then some of us have look, been there. I, look, I concur with the. Uh, the actions of taking you to the jail if you're go- if you're going 120, man, come on, you don't need to go that fast. Yeah, I don't. Taking I don't know that we have a lot of jail. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that we have a lot of precedents for you know questions of like, well, will he be suspended? I, this and that. I don't think. so. I don't think he will either. That's not a, a guarantee either way. I would assume no suspension. However, uh, he wasn't a practice today. He's missed practice for the hamstring. Now he's missing it for this. No, he he's there. Or he? Oh, so it was yesterday. I'm. Yeah, I'm now, he missed it yesterday. He's there. To, he's there today. 
Good. Okay. Practice. Be great. Yeah, he, he was trying to get there yesterday, but was driving very slow <laughs> to compensate. They um, took away his car. That I can guarantee. I've, I, uh, I know the problem. Oh, We've oh, all been there. We've all been there. Wow. Oh my gosh. Wow. So Look, you really you really do like Hollywood. You and Hollywood. I mean, me and Hollywood, we got a lot in common. Jason was a young man at one point. Yeah. Hmm. Would you Made believe some, it? Some incorrect decisions. Arizona doesn't like fast drivers. I think so. I know the music that was playing in Jason's car. When he was uh, when he was doing that, go ahead and hit that drop again. <laughs> this one? Yeah, I doubt it. Yeah, that's not the no, surprise of Jay Z. Was <laughs> yeah, was that or Kenny Loggins' Danger Zone? Oh, that'd Guys, be a good one. Donald Parham is having a great camp. He will be a prominent piece of the Chargers' downfield attack, according to the Athletic. Yep. Um, we- the question of does this take shine off of Gerald Everett? To me, it does. I mean, Donald Parham had a major prime time injury and we didn't like he had flashed before so yeah you know having a an athletic pass catching capable tight end and donald parham alongside gerald everett who's really never emerged as a fantasy relevant option to me it does take some shine off of it it's not much different than the albert aguabinom greg dulcich situation where those are two capable pass catchers in denver and yeah you got a superstar quarterback but where do you guys sit with Parham disrupting an Everett breakout and or being relevant? Parham was one of the players that I, I wanted to keep a close eye on since I've been pro Gerald Everett. Um, Parham seemed like he could be the heir apparent when Jared Cook left, but then they went out and signed a, a decent contract to Gerald Everett. So it seemed like, well, Gerald Everett's going to come in and play the Jared Cook role. Last year, Jared Cook had 83 targets while Parham played 14 games and had 27 targets. So now with the, the information that he's more and more involved, he is young, he is athletic, he's tall. He's gigantic. Yes, he's 6'8". He's he's yeah, and some people might say, oh, that's taller than Mo Ali Cox. But that's just that's that's, nonsense. Yeah, because Mo Ali Cox numbers are lies. He's, he's the biggest person in the entire world. But um, yeah, Donald Parham is, uh, I, I think, a really sneaky, maybe a dynasty ad, but it does take a little bit of the shine off Gerald Everett. You were hoping, uh, or at least Gerald Everett stands, were hoping that he'd come in and get you know, more targets than Jared Cook got, which could be, you know, easily 90 targets at that point. But if Donald Parham comes in and gets 40 targets, then you're probably ending up with Gerald Everett in the 60s or 70s for targets, and, and it's just a touchdown-only player. And we I, know – go ahead, Mike. I see it as more – like, I would – if you were into Everett before this was happening, I would still be into that, like, following that process. Last – look, Players evolve and they grow. He's going into year three of his career, so that's that's still like in in the range of well, Parham could evolve and become a true part of this offense. But to be seeing you know forty plus percent of the snaps you know before his injury and still really seeing one to two targets a game, that's you know uh, my faith would be in the contract of bringing Gerald Everett in. But I do agree that this is something to monitor. I think I think Everett just doesn't have – I think what it does is it takes away the chance he ends up – like he's never finished in five years above a top 20 tight end. So right. you might be able to stream him on a certain week, but it does concern me with like Joshua Palmer. He's evolving. He's getting better. Another target in the offense. You still have yes. Guyton and Williams and Keenan. So I don't know. A little, uh, little bit of a worry. And speaking of Greg Dulcich, uh, he did uh, suffer a hamstring injury. He's been limited to individual drills. He has been competing for that – Top spot with Albert Aguabanam in Denver. So, you know, I like Dulcich, but just a little bit of injury news there. Anything else you guys have? I do not. Let's mock. The Fantasy Footballers Mock Draft. Well, let me give you a lay of the land here. We have a head-to-head Mike versus Jason Mock Draft. You trying to crack your knuckles in the microphone? Yeah, I'm ready for a fight here. It was Mike. not a good crack. It was very lousy. I don't even think most people would have known <laughs> if you didn't call it out. <laughs> Twelve team, it. half PPR, one quarterback, two running backs, two wide receivers, one tight end, one flex, four bench. And I've got three mayhems to you. Whoa, whoa. mayhem. Oh, okay. that's right. That's okay. right. Yeah, yeah. That's it's going to hit. Should be expecting here. Okay. You should be fearing, Jason, not expecting. Fearing. The I'm mayhem. sitting in wet shorts, so let's go. <laughs> and uh, what's different? What's yeah? I mean, <laughs> what? 
One of the mayhems is a veto of the pick that you make. So you got you to check with me when you're locking it in. Make sure that I don't want to get you. Uh, one of the mayhems is to replace a pick. And the other one is to give your opponent power. And so Mike right. ended up through random draw, ending up with the fourth spot in the draft. Jason at 109. We are drafting on Sleeper. I am excited. You guys ready to go? Yeah, if I could recommend one piece of mayhem you could throw out there is just like swapping the draft picks, you know, like making Mike at nine and me at four. Oh, you where that. you draft. That would be so, mm -hmm. so so much mayhem for you. You know, it's funny. As you as you highlighted what your mayhem options were, I, the, the gamer in me was like, okay, so should I pick someone <laughs> that I don't want at one of these picks? <laughs> that will be the best. <laughs> like if there's one player I really want – I got to maybe not take him. So we'll see how this goes. This should be a blast. I, I kid you not. When I was thinking through this this morning, I 100% thought about you doing that. Yeah. About you trying to predict where I may or may not use oh, a sure. mayhem. Uh, but let's, let's kick this off. Jonathan Taylor at the 101. Christian McCaffrey at the 102. Derek Henry at the 103, which puts Mike, the oh. fantasy hitman, yeah, here we are. on the clock. Yeah, and, so and this, you're in the first. The, when you, whenever I'm in this situation, this is the Austin Eckler decision. Who Eckler was absolutely outrageous. He was so good for fantasy football. I mean, he's he's such a good running back in unbelievable pass catching running back. What well, we have multiple years of his career now at eight receiving touchdowns. So the question is him, or do I go with my number one wide receiver, who is Justin Jefferson, and like. The, the Spiller talks, the Isaiah Spiller talks out of Chargers camp are like, how much do you factor that in? Is it simply they are trying to establish that he is, in fact, he's the number two guy on the depth chart. Let's move forward with that, get him ready for the NFL. Or are they really saying we're going to take away some opportunities here for Austin Eckler? I think but, right now the, the reports out of camp are just completely mixed. Everyone has had a shot. Everyone's been working with the ones, and the and the number two job is up for grabs. So I I currently don't view Eckler's role as anything different, other than, um, t you know they don't want to give him quite as much work as last year. He's still the dude, um, but I think you know if they could take a few snaps away a game, they they would hope to do that. So having said all that, I still would prefer to start this draft with Justin Jefferson. Your Honor, may I select Justin Jefferson? You may select Justin. Jefferson. All right, we're we're on the board. JJ's on the team, <laughs> uh, and I look. I want to see you develop a plan before I ruin it. So Justin Jefferson goes to Mike at 104. He has not been stopped from his pursuit of JJ uh, Cooper Cup though at 105. So Mike, you made that Jefferson over Cup choice. It was rubber meets the road. I know that's how you have him ranked. Yeah, and it's it, it it's a very difficult situation. I blame. I have no problem with Cooper Cup being people's number one. Uh, wide receiver. Just think Jefferson is like got the potential for growth. Cooper Cup repeating anywhere close to that seems like that would, it would I mean, it would be incredible, but very, very difficult. And I mean, we, no, this isn't factoring into any of my projections yet. I will, I will say that, but there are some whispers going on in training camp about Matthew Stafford's elbow had to get an ejection. We're just like, it, it could be a situation to pay attention to. All right. After Jefferson, Cup, Eckler, Dalvin Cook, Najee Harris, Jason on the clock. What is your thought process here, Jason, before I decide whether or not it matters? Yeah, the player I was targeting coming in at the nine spot was Dalvin Cook. That's who will The often, device. The device. Uh, that is who often gets there. Obviously, he went at seven. Thankfully, a player did drop that, to me, is an easy pick, the last of a tier, which would be Jamar Chase, who reports out of camp have been um, still good. <laughs> oh, <it's mayhem. laughs> I don't like this game. <laughs> what, were, what were the reports out of camp for the player you're not going to get to draft, Jason? Uh, well, they said if anyone's worried about regression for uh, Jamar Chase, there has been none. Oh, man, this sucks. I shouldn't have said last of a tier. Is that what did it? I thought, I literally thought to myself, I thought, 
I shouldn't say this because it will incentivize Andy to make You have, have to, man. We're, we're here but, for the people. But that was my thought. I was like, he, he is, so I'm I'm not here for Andy or even myself. I'm here for you, Foot Clan. Well, look, I mean, Jason. And you're paying the price. <laughs> yeah. Jamar Chase, is, I'm going to use my uh, Andy's Choice Mayhem here. Okay. So I'm going to be making the pick for you. Can't wait to see who I get. And, and really looking at the landscape here, you know, Jamar Chase, uh, obviously an option. Wouldn't that be great if I just took him for you? <laughs> um, but for whatever reason, you you would like a positional advantage here at, at the 109, and it's a player that will be right on yeah, the edge. Here we go. And I think Travis Kelsey belongs that's, on the roster. <laughs> sensational. That sucks so much. If I, he had thrown to me for an opponent pick, that's exactly where yeah. I was going to go. Yeah, oh, let's you, see you build with Kelsey in uh, the first. All right, we'll do that. Every end of the first round has someone building with Travis Kelsey. That is who that's they That's right draft that has not been me yet um and it is now and so you took kelsey Mixon, and barkley go next and you're back on the clock jason oh. and, you're, and you're probably safe here oh man this is this is um interesting okay so if i were to take travis kelsey in the first i've grabbed a couple shares of kelsey but it's only when he slipped to the second um you know i'm looking here at um a couple of different a couple of different things. One, the fact that I didn't grab a wide receiver or running back in the first round means that as these next couple rounds come, I know that there are um, very, very, very few. There's there's literally two running backs that I like that get to the fourth round. So I am, generally speaking, going to be wide receiver there. And it's a toss-up in the third round as to the wide receiver running backs. Great options in both. So I'm going to focus on the running back position here and bypass C.D. Lamb Debo, Mike Evans, um, and I'm going to look at a running back that I think can ha has a chance to be a top five guy. That means you're a pass catcher. That means you're part of a great offense. And to me, that's Aaron Jones. Um, Aaron Jones has oh, he's basically the best uh. player on the Packers, and they're going to have a, obviously Aaron Rodgers' best player. But y you know what I mean. Um, so I think that uh, I will I will uh, start with a running back to go with my great tight end pick of Travis Kelsey. All right, and Jamar Chase, Diggs, and Adams all went. I forgot to mention those wide receivers before you made the Aaron Jones pick. After Jones goes Nick Chubb, CeeDee Lamb, Mark Andrews, Alvin Kamara at 208, climbing forward Alvin Kamara. Uh, Mike, would he have been a thought for you? Uh, yeah, I would have considered that there. Uh, Alvin Kamara, with the, the way that I'm viewing it, I'm moving forward in my drafts like – a suspension will not occur this year and we'll push that forward to to next season which you know that just just swipe the credit card don't worry about it we'll pay it off later so now here with uh with the draft coming in looking at the running backs who are there you know guys who I really like like James Conner Zeke Leonard Fournette still I'm I'm still in on Leonard Fournette and Javante Williams at the running back position which do want to highlight uh today on on Twitter, we've you know we've seen some reports of, well, it looks like a a seventy thirty split for Javante Williams and Melvin Gordon. Which, if if I believe that and that were true, that's a smash. Javante Williams is going right into my draft spot here. But then we had another beat reported. We had uh, Benjamin Albright saying, well, it's actually closer to fifty five forty. Oh, sorry. I had to correct myself. Uh, closer to a 55-45 split, which is deflating. And at, more, and probably more realistic. Yeah. And and so, like, that's why we, we've taught, like, we've just gone through the ultimate draft kit. You know, we, as the, we're getting the new information, we just did a rehaul on the sleepers, values, breakouts, and busts. And we got Melvin Gordon back where he needs to be as a value. I don't like it, personally, because it just hurts my feelings about Javante Williams. But for fantasy football... Melvin Gordon's a value. So, anyways, that's the running backs I'm looking at. And because those are lower, I think I can get them on the way back. I'm looking at the wide receiver position, and I would be deciding between the newly paid Debo Samuel, Mike Evans. We had this discussion just yesterday, Jason, the mm -hmm. keep trade cut. And I I think I landed in that discussion that I would be going with Debo Samuel. So, that would be my pick. It would be your pick? It but it's would <laughs> Mayhem. <laughs> but it's not your pick. Jason, I'm giving you the power. Ah, this is 
is where I oh, didn't want it. Wow. I really, really, really wanted a, an option to go with a different position for you. I wanted to be able to give you, um, you know, either a quarterback or a tight end because that happened to me and it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think it's appropriate here to well, take I mean, Josh look, Allen in the second round. Josh Mark Allen's, Andrews is already gone. Josh Allen's ADP is very similar to where Tyreek Hill is going. They're one I, pick apart. There are there are people who would take Josh Allen here. I won't do that to you, Mike, solely because I don't I, I wouldn't merciful, recommend merciful, merciful man. I, I wouldn't recommend to the Foot Clan to do that um as much as I want to destroy your team um and, and win this draft. I I just think it's bad strategy in the second round to take a quarterback in a single quarterback league. So here you were saying you th you thought the running backs would get uh, back to you. Yeah. So I'm going to take one of them. Okay. At the very least. Um, Which one? Th that is. This a great is the question. friendliest mayhem I have ever heard. <laughs> I think our producers sh are probably ashamed of you. Yeah. Well, don't I mean, worry. I'm not going to give him Javante. I know he's a, a big into Zeke. I'm going to go with the guy that I, I think would be the running back of choice here, even though he is overweight, and I hope he just fats out of the league this year, but Leonard Fournette okay. would well, be the pick. Interesting. So I will uh, have you start off with uh, playoff Lenny. Interesting. All Jefferson right, so and Fournette, Fournette to start the draft. Kelsey and Aaron Jones to start the draft. Kyle, are, is Kyle in the studio? I'm here. <laughs> wow wow He's super and, happy about and it super excited um you know your job is to talk about football right also are you aware i'm that, here that when you uh were brought where, on where, you were brought on in front of hundreds of thousands of people or did, did you think it was just us here <laughs> you're gonna get justin tucker next jason oh okay <laughs> jefferson fournette kelsey aaron jones where would you rather be right now um i'd rather have jefferson fournette me too okay. all right that makes sense <laughs> debo Debo, uh, I yeah, that's he, a good pick there, Team Three. He, I believe he's our consensus wide receiver six. Uh, at this point in the draft, he would have been the seventh off the board. Mike Evans, Tyreek Hill, AJ Brown, all wide receivers that went after Mike's Fournette pick, Mike's choice of Fournette, and then uh, Javante Williams and Josh Allen as well. So here we are in the third round, Mike. What are you thinking? How are you, how are you building this squad now that you have a split between wide receiver and running back? So over at the wide receiver, I mean, there, there's still great choices. Keenan Allen, T. Higgins, uh, my dude, Michael Pittman. Definitely not Jason's dude, yep, Michael Pittman. No, that's my dude. Uh, having Leonard Fournette here, though, <laughs> I don't like it very much. Because it's <laughs> like, uh, do you really – you want James Conner and Leonard Fournette on the same team? You want to take that amount of, of risk? That is uh, a tough situation. And the I answer mean... is no. I do not want <laughs> – I don't want that in my life. Uh, I, I, the last time we did the draft, I went with a you know really really wide receiver heavy build of the the four starters. So I'm gonna tr I'm gonna try and go a little bit different. Wow, that Fournette pick is <laughs> that's that's a thorn in my crawl. Mm, good. Uh, I'm gonna go with Zeke because I don't want Leonard Fournette and and uh, James Conner on the same team. Now you didn't ask, you know whether that was something you could lock in, Mike, but oh, I'm not, I apologize. not going to mayhem you there. Zeke was who I thought you were going to select. Um, he feels more of a stabilizing selection with Fournette above him. Yeah, I don't you like have it. Jefferson. Uh, Kyle Pitts goes next. Keenan Allen, James Conner, Patrick Mahomes. Jason, as you begin to think about this pick and how you build your super squad with Kelsey and Aaron Jones, uh, let's go ahead and take a quick break. All right, Jason, you're on the clock. Got a lot of options here. Travis Kelsey and Aaron Jones on your team. Travis Kelsey and Aaron Jones. Well, I, I am happy here. That's a we that feels like a weird start. I don't know why. It's it's fine. Yeah, it it, it is. I mean, the, the reality is, I don't know if you have been drafting a ton of Kelsey. I have not. Um, it's something we, we haven't done much of this year, and I would say that more often than not, the people who take Kelsey at the end of round one are people who prefer wide receivers, usually play in you know, full PPR leagues, so uh, it's it's more of a unique build, but I am fine here because, uh, while I shouldn't say this out loud, there, you have are, to. there are a couple wide receivers here I really like. I certainly want to go wide receiver here. At running back, you've got Cam Akers, David Montgomery, my guy Brees Hall, ETN, who I like. 
I'm hoping maybe one of them can make it back to me. This is a short turn for me. But given the fact that I'm in the third round, I don't have a wide receiver yet, and there are two wide receivers I absolutely love, I was just really, really, really hoping that Michael Pittman made it to me. That was my goal. My guy, Michael Pittman, he got to me. But I will, I will not allow this. My guy, nonsense. Th- I, I, will, I will mute your mic, uh, Mike. So... I mean, let, let's let's just throw this up here okay. on uh, on YouTube. Where's this drop? Are you looking for I Pity found City? It. Yeah, who's who do you see there? Who do you see there? Gyrating and okay. dancing okay. with Michael Pittman. Yeah, it's okay. not you. Well, not you. All right. Um, the thing is, is I've got a wide receiver still on the board that I have even higher than Michael Pittman. It's T. Higgins. So that would be my pick if I am allowed to make it. Which Mr. you are. Holloway. Go ahead All and right. take it. Go ahead and take yes. it. We'll see if Pittman slides back <laughs> around. <laughs> I was waiting for Jason to just be like, oh, I clicked on Michael Pittman. Sorry. <laughs> T. Higgins is the pick. Kelsey, Aaron Jones, T. Higgins, your starting roster. Tight end, running back, oh, wide receiver. Come on. Cam Akers, Brees Hall, Justin Herbert, the next three off the board. <sighs> uh, now, so real quick here, the third round. Allen, Mahomes, Herbert, all in the third round. Are you ending up with any of those quarterbacks this year? Nope. No. I mean, the the very back back of the third, if you're on the 3-4 turn and Josh Allen is there, I, I would consider it. But not Mahomes or Herbert in the third. That's a hefty price to pay. So uh, your guy, Brees Hall, off the board as well, like I said. And then ETN, Waddle, and David Montgomery. Montgomery down at 403. <sighs> Team 10 needs to lay off the – Testosterone. Yeah, Mixon, Barkley, Acres, Montgomery. <laughs> uh, um, Jason, you are back yeah. on the clock, and this, and I'm, you know, this sucks. <laughs> this sucks so bad. I feel like I'm in a like a tiny plastic room that the oxygen is being taken out of slowly <laughs> because this draft has fallen very well after that last pick of Higgins. Michael Pittman, my dude, is still there in the fourth. Considering I didn't start with a wide receiver in the first two rounds, I would love to go Kelsey Aaron Jones, T. Higgins, and Michael Pittman. Am I allowed to take Michael Pittman? Well, Jason, you will be happy to know that. No, you're not. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, dang, give it. But I will. Uh, I will go ahead and give you the ability to pick somebody else. So, nope. That's oh, a no. Nope. Oh, that, that, that is so good. I was so that's terrified a, you were going to give it to Mike. I, that's can a I pick again. Pick? Can I guess your pick? You if can. You, it's it's uh, definitely Deontay Johnson. It was not, but oh. that would have that been a sensational okay. one. Okay. Whew. All so right. No can. Michael Pittman. Pity City has been closed to you by way of mayhem, but you yeah. do get the opportunity to make a different selection here. Well, I prefer – uh, Michael Pittman. Uh, I, you know, I'm looking at the running backs here. This is what I was talking about earlier. I knew that the fourth round. The reason I took Aaron Jones was because the fourth round. I don't really like the running backs. It's you know, Aaron, uh, Antonio Gibson, Josh Jacobs, J.K. Dobbins, guys. That I don't really feel confident in versus really good wide receivers. Uh, some people like Deontay Johnson, not me. Uh, Terry McLaurin, D.J. Moore, Mike Williams. A lot of guys that I like here. Cortland Sutton. So to me, this is a wide receiver pick and I will stay true to my personal rankings which would have Mike Williams at the top of that list that's that's a good uh it's a good pick thank you go go ahead and uh, grab Mike Williams there T Higgins Mike Williams Aaron Jones Travis Kelsey uh your running backs I'm going to be very curious to see what they look like me uh, too (laughs) the rest of the draft Darren Waller Deontay Johnson pity city off the dream is dead the dream has died. Yes. Eat and then it. Terry McLaurin. Uh, Mike is back on the clock. Jefferson, Fournette, Zeke. And then uh, some options here, Mike. We've gotten buzz about Jerry Judy recently, about him being a star at camp. You've got your guy, Cortland Sutton, still on the board. DJ Moore, uh, DK Metcalf, the initials. This is, I don't like this draft very much because <laughs> this is an easy pick. If. I did take two running backs in the in the second and the third, as my team is right now, Jefferson, Fournette, Zeke, and Cortland Sutton came back to me. You know how I feel about tap dancing, ladies and gentlemen, but I would strap them shoes on and I would do I would just be tap dancing all over 
that trap. But there's no way that this is happening. So go ahead and just, just crush my dreams. Yeah, yeah. Mayhem. Thank you. I was going to let you get away with that pick, but your exuberance for Cortland Sutton was just... You were not. You were a bold-faced liar. It was just too good. I mean, you were just too into it, Mike. And, you know, sitting here in the fourth, I'm going to go ahead and make your pick for you because I don't know if you could have seen past your love for Cortland Sutton for the You pick, are correct. For the pick that you really needed to make. Oh, gosh. And, look, I know you're a Trey Lance guy. I am. And I know that at this point in the draft, after four tight ends have gone off the board, there's no way you wouldn't go George Kittle here. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. I think yes. George Kittle is going to end up the pick. Okay. Okay. So yeah. uh, feel free to go, feel free to take him, Mike. I want I want you to do it. I want you to do it uh, in That's the system. <laughs> what? Mm, push that button. George okay, Kittle. Cool. George, George Kittle's Kittle. on my team. Hey, great news, everybody. George <laughs> Kittle fell to me in the fourth round, just as I hoped. I, I can't imagine you're not excited with what MVP – didn't you put a bet on Trey Lance MVP? Well, yeah. At the What what were the odds? What did we get, like 10,000 to one? A lot of money. A lot yeah, of free money. Drop, drop a fiver on that? Who cares? So George Kittle off the board. Now, Mike, some things have worked out in your favor. DJ Moore, DK Metcalf, Antonio Gibson, Josh Jacobs, Amari Cooper, J.K. Dobbins. You're back in the fifth round with, with your options just yeah. alive and well. Yeah, I, I know. And the, I don't even need to discuss anything, ladies and gentlemen, because Cortland Sutton is on the board. Are you hitting the button? Is that no, a thumbs you're good. up? Go oh, take it. baby! The tap shoes are my clickety-clack, clickety-clack, clack, 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 clack. Oh, that Shuffle ball up. change. Shuffle ball change. That worked pretty well for you, Mike. And no, George, George Kittle and what a tight end pick. Oh, I'm my God. Fantastic. Yeah, if you flip those two <laughs> picks in your mind, you probably don't care as much. That is 100% true. Yeah. George, George Kittle running to the to the fifth round is is a pretty good pick. So that worked out well for you, Mike. Uh, after after that pick, Lamar Jackson, Hollywood Brown, Jerry Judy, and Elijah Mitchell off the board. All right, Jason, you are back on the clock. You're assembling your Kelsey Jones Higgins Williams team. Well, Jason, the uh, the board has fallen in a way where there is a player I had a starred. Uh, I was hoping got back to me. He did get back to me. You mentioned earlier, Andy, because I started with a Travis Kelsey build, you're going to either be weak at wide receiver or weak at running back by the fifth round. You, know, you just, you know, you, you don't have a choice to mm -hmm. get all of the players when you take That's a right. tight end. I'm weak at running back, and the options are dwindling. I personally... Oh, this is interesting. I personally believe that it will be Clyde Edwards Alaire's job. Okay. Uh I I think that he's shown when when he's actually been on the field, he's been a fine running back for fantasy. Not great. He has like people wanted him to be this top 5 superstar Patrick Mahomes, Andy Reid dominant uh, running back and he has never been that, but he's been a top 15 running back for fantasy pretty much when he's been on the field. So that would be my pick if I am allowed to make it a pass catcher for the Chiefs in the 5th round. Am I allowed to draft Clyde Edwards. Yes, Alaire. yes. Go ahead and take Woo! your guy. I am. Okay. It is interesting. You are merciful <laughs> and beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting that Kelsey and Clyde, you got the that pair on the team. Um, it is weird because Clyde has had end of year finishes that have been respectable, but I have to date, I have never had somebody walk into the office and say, man, Clyde won me that game last night. And yeah. that's, that's the part that's been hard, but all the reports are very good. Um, you know, when you have Clyde with the ones and then Jarek McKinnon working in and them talking about uh, some of these other backs in a real peripheral sense, like to me, it's Clyde and then some amalgamation. So there is a separation there. Burrow, Schultz, Miles Sanders in the fifth round, Hawkinson, Kyler, and, and uh, Amon Ross St. Brown. Jason, back on the clock. So just as it was uh, a minute ago, I don't like any of the other running backs that are at this point in the draft. I'm going to look later for, you know, some uh, a Melvin Gordon or some value, uh, maybe a Chase Edmonds in, in a future round that I think can, uh, you know, fill in as a, as a backup, as a replacement, as a flex option. Now, I got a rule this year, and the rule is here, which is usually if Jalen Hurts is there in the sixth and I am on the clock, that pick is made. But... And I've said this before, you don't want 
to go early tight end and early quarterback in the same draft. Now, this isn't super early for, you know, sixth round Jalen Hurts. I, I love the value. But what it does mean is, you know, when I'm, I'm looking at the wide receivers here, and and they're very, very good still on the board. Uh, you have Michael Thomas coming back from injury. Chris Godwin, you know, you, you could get really lucky there and have a great player. Allen Robinson has been dominating uh, the training camp highlights. So um, to sacrifice a wide receiver, a, an important positional pick for a quarterback is something that is hard to do when you have a tight end. So I would pick, and this will be interesting, Andy, because this is your dude. You've been in yeah. love with him. Yeah. I traded him to you, so I'm curious if you want me or don't want me to have Allen Robinson my pick. Wow. Oh. Mayhem. <laughs> the answer is he does not. <sighs> I'm glad you brought it up. I mean, Allen Robinson is my favorite value now in the draft, um, yeah, and, nice. and so it would be neat if you had him. <laughs> However, uh, I am giving the power to Mike to make your pick for you. That's fantastic, and I I see it, Jason. I see a need at wide receiver. It's on your team, mm -hmm. and look, I, I'll, I'll stick in that role. I'll get you a wide receiver too, a guy who caught a whole bunch of touchdowns last year. I'm gonna put oh Adam Field God. on you, that roster. I didn't get you. I did. I didn't do you dirty. You did. You put Leonard Fournette on my I team. I could have got Josh Allen. I could have taken quarterback round two. <laughs> oh, I hate you. Oh man, I quit. You already used yours. <laughs> I know. This is oh man, brutal. you were so Adam mer Thielen. you were so merciful early in the draft, Jason. Mike, not so merciful. I thought maybe he would just throw Jalen Hurts on the team after you said you didn't want the onesies, but Thielen that was the whole, that was the things a little bit worse. <laughs> but now he's just gonna take him for himself. Now was your merciful move to get mercy in return? Was it a was it a selfish mercy at the top of the draft? It was not a selfish mercy. It was really in the best interest of building a, a legitimate roster for the Foot Clan. And, and, and the reality is the same advice that I just gave when I was going to go wide receiver and not take Jalen Hurts because I already had a tight end early, uh, that, that holds up. So it, it's just ironic that he went Thielen instead of the other wide receivers I named. How are you feeling going into the – 2022 season leaning on Aaron Jones, Clyde Edwards, Alaire as your top two running backs, knowing that um, you have an, you do have an advantage at tight end. Um, you've got a lot and of at wide receiver at, now upside with Higgins, Williams and Thielen. Yeah. I mean, uh, it really, this roster and this is, this is why personally I haven't been uh, in on the first round Travis Kelsey, because this roster will depend on Travis Kelsey. Like if Travis Kelsey dominates yeah, yeah, and he's yeah. the one, this roster is absolutely fine with these pass catching running backs, depth at wide receiver. Now, Travis Kelsey will be the difference maker, and I will be absolutely fine. But it, he's going to be playing at 33 years old this year. That is something we haven't seen a tight end dominate at that age. He's set up for success, and I will be fine if Travis Kelsey is great. I just feel like whenever you draft that onesie in the first round, you're putting all your chips in one basket. Chips. Don't put your chips in one basket. That's what they say. Put them in lots of baskets. Yeah. I mean, I love chips out of a basket. That's how I eat my you chips. You go bag to basket? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm on the clock. Jefferson, Fournette, Zeke, George Kittle, Cortland Sutton. Oh, man, that Sutton pick. <laughs> saving saving my, my hide there. All right. So the players that I will be looking at here, Allen Robinson would definitely be on the radar. Fellas, I don't know what to do with Chris Godwin. Uh with the if Chris Godwin is healthy and playing with Tom Brady a, a let's say 14 games but he's good to go it's like that would be such an incredible value here but I am I'm, I'm on the side of I'm terrified of the ACL injury not knowing at this point where it would go so I would lean that I would go either Allen Robinson or even possibly the upside of Gabriel Davis uh at this point interesting and then at the running back position, like both Kareem Hunt and Chase Edmonds on the board and Rashad Penny, like all those three guys, and I feel like I can play the ADP game with them. So I'm going to – oh, man. I, I don't like that all three of us are just so quickly rising on this player, but it's it's mm. happening. I would draft Allen Robinson. Oh, how nice for you. Go ahead am, and am take I, it. Go ahead and right. take it. We're in the clear. We're yeah. in the clear. Allen Robinson. Oh, man, what a sixth-round pick. It really is. I mean, with Sutton and Jefferson and Allen Robinson, 
I mean, I think Sutton and Robinson both represent uh, upside, but they ha- they represent some downside too. We haven't seen it from Robinson in a while, and we haven't seen it from Sutton in a while. So um, there there is some risk there, but when you have Justin Jefferson as your wide receiver one, it mitigates that a little bit. Uh, Drake London, Kareem Hunt, uh, and then we have Damian Harris, DeAndre Hopkins, Chris Godwin. So those two guys back-to-back, Bateman. And then, Mike, back to you. Is there a name that jumps out to you? So, I I mean, I, I mentioned it would likely be Kareem Hunt or Chase Edmonds on the way back. Kareem Hunt, Wentz, who that – Actually, I don't even know. I mean, they're very close. I don't know which one I'd prefer. So playing the ADP game, Chase Edmonds didn't make it back, and I buy into him being the starter and the primary guy for the Miami Dolphins. But, yeah, oh, that Mayhem. scared me. That's, I knew it was coming, and it still startled me. Yep. you got to pick somebody else, though, Mike. Chase Edmonds, I know that Kareem Hunt was gone and Edmonds was your oh, guy, but gosh. it's you're getting the final mayhem, the nope, pick again. All right. Uh, so you already man. got Robinson. So I don't know if Gabe Davis is as tempting. Uh, it's very, very tempting. Uh, what about Rashid? Cordero? I find myself just out avoiding on, avoiding on Patterson. Cordero. Like, if I'm wrong on Patterson, uh, then I will get the comeuppance of the year that I was out on Cordero Patterson. But just that age, can he repeat anything close? And when when the team actually has something of substance behind him. I think Tyler Algier, the rookie, is a good running back. The draft capital says it's an uphill climb, but I think he's good. Uh, so I am. I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to take that upside of Gabriel Davis. All right, Gabe Davis, your third straight wide receiver, Ken Walker, Jalen Hurts, Jason. Were you hoping Hurts would come back to you at 709? Yeah, definitely. I mean, now that I got a superstar Adam Thielen out of the way, um, <laughs> then, uh, yeah, th- that would have been great, but he went a couple picks ahead of me. Uh, now, the nice thing here is, by my calculations, you're all out of mayhem. So I could try to, calculations are correct. So I could try to uh, salvage my <laughs> running back position. The nice thing is the mayhem uh, benefited me here. Chase Edmonds would be That's my right. pick. I don't have to ask anymore, so I will oh. select Chase Edmonds. Well, you're welcome. Well, you got my Allen Robinson. Yeah, I got your that's Chase what Edmonds. Saying. It yeah. worked. It it worked. A in swippy swappy. Yeah. All right, you're back on the clock, Jason. Patterson did go at the end of the round, so you chose Edmonds over Patterson as well. Devin Singletary, who was a darling at the end of the year, off the board, and the Jets wide receivers back to back. Elijah Moore, who uh, reports say he's firmly entrenched at the number one position. Yes. And, and then Garrett Wilson going next. So Jason, back on the clock. You well, my three- plan. My plan was really easy. Um, I I have uh, three running backs. I've got three wide receivers. I think I'm okay at most of those positions. Obviously, Travis Kelsey is the centerpiece of my team. I planned from the get-go here to take Trey Lance because I did not want Mike. (laughs) You don't mean to have that stack? I don't want you to have that stack. I don't want you to have joy, happiness, or any anything along those lines. Let me say that's rude. No, I well, sure, we're frenemies today. Remember. Um, that being said, I, I cannot in good conscience take Trey Lance over a, a different quarterback who's on the board here, who I believe is going to be a, a top six. I think his, his outlook for having a top five finish is more likely. Breaking news. We have breaking news, okay. Jason. Let's, let's have it. Your favorite wide receiver, not named Adam Thielen. Deontay Johnson and the Steelers have agreed, and we got the notification, just came through on Sleeper, to a two-year, $36 million extension. This they, this is almost – I thought it was going to be short-term. I really yep. did. I thought it would be a, a little short-term thing, keep them happy. Okay. Wow. Well, that takes, that takes the risk off of Deontay Johnson sure. for drafting him. It says that the team clearly thinks they need him. I mean, they, you know, he's been holding in. And how have the reports on Mitchell Trubisky? Of course Trubisky? they need him. He's great. Oh, right. the tra- I mean, <laughs> Trubisky's reports have been um, terrible. They're watching their offense going, okay, I know we weren't going to pay Deontay, but we need him. So not the greatest, uh, you know, I mean, Claypool and Hurt. Hurt. Yeah. So, um, well, that's great news. <laughs> Good for you, Deontay. So you're back on the clock, Jason. I am back on the clock. Uh, <laughs> what I was going to say is, um, when I look at Russell Wilson versus Trey Lance, I think that he has higher odds at finishing as a top five guy and a much safer floor. We know he's great. He's got good weapons. He's a first ballot Hall of Famer. Um, so I will take Russell Wilson. Let's ride. 
Let's ride. Let's ride. Mm-hmm. Let's ride. Yeah. Let's uh, ride. That, that was that was a good pick. And Foot Clan. <laughs> Let's ride. Let's ride. <laughs> so after Russ went Tony Pollard, Dak Prescott, Brandon Ayuk, who Brandon Ayuk, speaking of the that hype train, it's rolling along right now at full steam out of San Francisco camp. Is and Jason then, a does he have a ticket? I don't know. I think Jason. Brandon Ayuk, obviously, uh, based on my uh uh, opinions last year I think he's a great wide receiver and he's going to have a quarterback that throws it downfield more so I, I think Brandon Ayuk you know when you're talking about an eighth ninth round pick in your leagues I think he's going to be just fine he's still going to be the third option for Trey Lance probably yeah. so I am back on the clock now I was a little upset you realize the error in your ways of like if you just go Trey Lance because then it was just I will take Russell Wilson and have the Russell Wilson Cortland Sutton Stack and be ecstatic about that. So ecstatic the, about that. Oh, I like it. Mm -hmm. You're so, welcome. So now the, that's right. The, it's an eighth round joke. <laughs> now the question becomes for me. I mean, I only have two running backs. I really, really want Trey Lance on this roster. Team three has a quarterback, so they could take a second. But there's two teams that could take a quarterback through this turn here, and I'm going to. I'm going to stare those demons down, and I'm going to roll, man. I don't know if I want to do that. I'm not going to do it. I'm not, oh, I you got coward. Scared. You I coward. Got scared. I took Trey Lance. <laughs> Trey oh. Lance, and he, he would have gone. Trey Lance would have been gone um, for sure because Stafford and Brady went after him. Oh. Robert, Robert Woods at 901, Alan Lazard at 902. Those are two players that you might have missed an opportunity on, but you had three yes. wide receivers. Woods looks like the one in Tennessee. Lazard's the one in Green Bay, and then Tyler Lockett at nine oh three because of course. Yeah, it. I think that's a tremendous value on Tyler Lockett. Okay, I am back on the clock. Now you could take uh, Melvin Gordon. We talked about him earlier. You could try to solidify your wider or your running back room. Yeah, that's where I lean. My decision is coming down to Melvin Gordon or what is my faith in the upside of Ramondre Stevenson, uh, right. running back for the New England Patriots. Uh, it sounds like they're splitting reps, which you would expect because of the New England Patriots. The the news on James White continues to be uh, not fantastic. Of they just they do not know when he's going to be back. Not that I, Stevenson's going to be catching a ton of passes, but they're saying he could be in that role. But the split, I think, with Melvin Gordon is just it's unfortunately going to be too close. And I will take him. And in and, uh including a another little nugget that Albright, Benjamin Albright sent out today was in his opinion, watching camp, Melvin Gordon has clearly been the better pass catcher. Which yeah. is an interesting, your problem. interesting uh little nugget there. Yeah. So I took Melvin. Okay. Uh th this is this is decent news for me. There was a running back that I was targeting um that felt to me he is a day two second round running back pick. Who is a pass catcher? Oh, man, you're in on I, on the best offense in football. I can't get in on and it, and that's fine. This is this isn't a home run easy layup guaranteed pick, but I do think that the upside is tremendous. The the Buffalo Bills, who went out and drafted James Cook in the second round, first tried to get Chase Edmonds. They couldn't. They were outbid. Then they went and signed J.D. McKissick. They lost a lot of targets in Emmanuel Sanders and. Um, and Cole Beasley, and we know that those targets go to the running back position. Now, you say, well, Josh Allen hasn't thrown to the running backs. Well, he hasn't really had good pass-catching running backs to throw to. James Cook, I think, is a very good running back who will see the passing work. Yeah, they, I don't, they did try to sign J.D. McKissick. Yeah, and and, and Chase. Um, so I, I don't think that this is um, – I don't think it's outlandish to think, could James Cook, just play his way into the first and second down role sure. as well, because I think he's going to be the pass catching guy. Um, you know, the competition isn't great there with Devin Singletary and Zach Moss. So I am in, and usually, historically, you look at last year alone, basically, if you grab a rookie running back, they beat their ADP. Right. So uh, I'm going to take the second rounder on a great offense in James. Cook. A right. bunch of the tight ends off the board in the ninth and 10th round. Dawson Knox, Zach Ertz, Mike Kosicki, Pat Fryermuth. People taking their shots on tight ends there. Jason, you're back on the clock. Uh, three it's... of your four running backs are quite pass uh, catch heavy with yeah. uh, Aaron Jones, Chase Edmonds, James Cook. That is what I want in fantasy football. Unless I'm in a standard league, I want guys that catch the ball. They will be 
more game scoop game script <laughs> proof. Scoop. There um, it is. <laughs> what what's great what's great here for me is that the wide receiver that I <laughs> that I would have gone with last round um, was none of the wide receivers that went in between me on the turn. I am a Oh, now I know your pick. I am a big believer in Kadarius Tony. He has been he is clearly one of the top two wide receivers on this roster. So when they are in two wide receiver sets, three wide receiver sets, Kadarius Tony is going to be on the field. He dominated in targets per route run last year. He looked electric on the field and is part of a new Brian Dable offense. So I'm in on Kadarius Tony here. All right. So after Tony went Russell Gage, Michael Carter, rookie Christian Watson from Green Bay, Isaiah Spiller, the Chargers rookie running back. Your selection of Tony made this pick. They just it narrowed it down for me. So it will be quick and easy. I will take Marquez Valdez Scantling of the Kansas City Chiefs. Is he the number one? It's possible. Uh, is he just a deep threat who hits on a few couple long touchdowns throughout the year? That is also possible. But All right, Mike, your selection. final your final pick. You and Jason in the final round here. Um, who you got? All right. So after uh, Scantling went Derek Carr, Robinson, Justin Fields, Cole Komet, Hunter Henry, and Ronald Jones. So looking at I mean, my running back position is very, very thin with just Gordon, Elliott, and Fournette. There's really not a lot going on here <laughs> at the uh, at the running back position that is extremely interesting to me. I mean, you're in backup city of like Alexander Madison. Naeem Hines has been getting talked up a, a little bit out of Colts camp with Matt Ryan. I do think his targets go back up. What about Daryl Henderson with the opportunities he may have in, in Los Angeles? Yeah, yeah, that is – that – I like eh, – yeah, eh, maybe, maybe. After all the news, I just, uh, that's, that one's hard for me to get on board with, too, of McVay saying he sees he has two running backs for the, char or for, uh, the Rams when he has never actually done that. But, I mean, you well, now that you bring that up, Andy, and you were so kind to us throughout the draft, Henderson at this point <laughs> – uh, what we at least know is when Henderson had the opportunity for the Rams last year – very, very good for fantasy purposes. So maybe they split, maybe they don't. You could get lucky with him on a certain yeah. week, whereas Madison's going to need an injury to be giving you some baseline numbers, so Henderson can give you some numbers if you have to spot start him. The other option I was looking at maybe was Kenneth Gainwell, second-year running back for the Philadelphia Eagles, who had a better season than we remember because when we thought we could count on him, we couldn't, but his numbers were still fantastic for a, for a very run-heavy team. Jason, you are on the clock. I am on the clock. I've got a bench of Chase Edmonds, James Cook, and Kadarius Toney. So I am looking at uh, the wide receiver position here, and I want an upside guy who could maybe smash week one or be cut, be relevant or irrelevant. So I am going to take Rondale Moore. Yeah, I love it. Uh, I love it. You know, with, with Hopkins out of the way week one, he could be more important than we think with Christian Kirk gone. And if not, I'll cut him and sign someone else. All right, to wrap up this mayhem mock draft, Mike has uh, Justin Jefferson, Cortland Sutton, Allen Robinson, Gabe Davis, and MVS at wide receiver. Fournette and Zeke will be the backbone of that running back room with Melvin Gordon and Daryl Henderson late. George Kittle in the fourth, his favorite pick. Trey Lance in the eighth round as well. Jason with Travis Kelsey in the first. Oh, thank his, you. His tight end. <laughs> He's got Aaron Jones, Clyde Edwards, Alaire, Chase Edmonds, and James Cook at running back. T. Higgins, Mike Williams, Adam Thielen, Kadarius Tony, and Rondell Moore at wide receiver, and Russell Wilson. Let's ride. Best Ball Breakdown, presented by Underdog Fantasy. All right. Let's ride. Um, we, we've been doing uh, best ball tips all summer long. Uh, been in so many underdog drafts. We've got 12 different uh, underdog breakdown segments. If you want to go back and listen to them, this week is a very, very simple tip. I, I, I got together with Kyle. It's said, simple but very powerful. It's so important, and this is a tip that is coming from my heart. I've told myself this, and sometimes I do it and sometimes I don't, and I am always, always, always better off when I do this. It's so simple. Draft backwards. What? <laughs> Draft backwards. When you are on the clock, 
You need to look at your future picks. Basically, uh, the my, my favorite way to analyze picks is looking at the draft board first and then going and looking at ADP. Look, a great philosopher once said, knowing where you are is half the battle of where you want to be. Who was that? That was me. That was me. I just said it. I'm the great philosopher. I did I did it. I did the quote me uh sign Jason Moore. But knowing where you're going, like for instance, in this draft here today, I, I I knew that I didn't like the running backs in round four. And so I took a running back in round two instead of great wide receivers there because I knew later I'm gonna be unhappy with this position. And all you have to do to make this tip come through in best ball is they have the draft board. It's so easy. You're at pick, uh, you know, 24. Go and look and say, okay, what are my next few picks on ADP? And you say, okay, I'm, you know, not picking again until 48, 49. And then go back to the ADP and look at the running backs. Look at the wide receivers, the tight ends, the quarterbacks that are in your next round's ADP and say, man, I hate all those guys. Oh, man, there's a lot of guys that are going to be there I will like. I don't need to take one now. It's, it's basically like tier-based drafting. But the system sets it up so easily for you to reverse engineer your team. You have to know where you're going positionally before you make your pick. And I'm telling you, I am guilty of just, I, there's a guy on the board, I really like him, he fits my roster, and I take him. That sounds great, but it could screw up my team because I go, oh, in hindsight later, I go, there were the same position I like better, and I wish I had just taken the other position uh, because in the end, which is the only thing that matters, at the end of the draft, I will like my team better. So basically, this tip is simple. When you're on the clock, do not draft until you look at your at least next two picks ADP and go see what players are going to be there that you like. Then come back to your current pick. Draft backwards. That was Best Ball Breakdown presented by Underdog Fantasy. Start playing on Underdog today. They'll match your first deposit up to $100 if you use the code ballers all right gentlemen how was your first uh jaunt through some mock draft mayhem was it was it trepidatious were you scared was the drop too loud in your ears i mean terrified the whole time yeah <laughs> uh, i was uh, terrified after you were out of mayhem <laughs> uh, you know it's like uh it's because you were just culture so, shock you were yeah. shooketh from the adam thielen selection yeah the thielen was really the brutal <laughs> one here i thought it was going to be <laughs> travis kelsey as the brutal but no uh, the, the uh, hey, good news! I now have a share of Adam Thielen. Yeah, there you go, <laughs> there you go. I was most surprised by the uh, the Leonard Fournette generosity and not doing more to undermine Mister Mike Wright. But lesson learned. But we'll 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 do another one in the future, no question. Thank you for joining us on the show today. Check out the Ultimate Draft Kit at ultimatedraftkit.com. Appreciate each and every one of you. What a thank you for day. tuning in, everybody. Remember. Watch some football tonight, and we'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.